Real Orchestra. Cinematic Studio Strings. Now replacing the melody line with Abbey Road Orchestra first violins. And finally, replacing the melody with Cine String Score, this is 2.0. Sorry, here we go again. Hey everyone, Mark Giovanni here. Thanks for tuning in. So in this video, we are comparing Abbey Road Orchestra first violins with Cinematic Studio Strings and uh, Cine Strings. And the goal for this, this is the second video of the video series where we are trying to see if uh, Abbey Road Orchestra is worth the price. So to do so, we're comparing some music. Last uh, In the last video, we compared uh, the three libraries transcribing uh, these variations of an original theme. And then in this video, we're going to transcribe a melody that moves a little bit faster. So it's going to be an allegro melody and we're going to go for Beethoven's sixth and then Haydn's Symphony 104. So as you can see, we've got these Beethoven's and we've got first Cinematic Studio Strings, then Abbey Road Orchestra and finally Cine Strings. And then we've got Haydn's, same thing, CSS, uh, Abbey Road and Cine Strings. So this video is going to be a little bit different than the other one. In the other one, you saw me actually composing. Um, but um, I saw the analytics that most of you or you we went to the, the, the end. And so I want to be respectful with, with your time. And so in this case, I decided to work ahead of time and show you the results. Hopefully this works. Let me know if you prefer this style. Um, so what I did is I put kind of like 20 minutes of work per transcription per library. So this means I first created the, the background, right? So there's the basses, cello, violas, and violins too, which is the same for the three examples. This does not change. The only thing that changes is the violins one line. And then I spend 20 minutes to create this. And then 20 minutes for this one and 20 minutes for this one. CS, uh, Cinematic Studio, Cinematic, uh, Cine Strings, Abbey Road Orchestra, and Cinematic Studio Strings. 20 minutes each. So, then why I did two examples? I think, well, first, two is better than one, but also because I wanted to, in the first example, that was the initial goal, then uh, it slightly changed. But in the first example, I wanted to just use key switches, and the second example, I wanted to use separate the different articulations in different tracks, or at least, you know, the short articulations and the long articulations. All right, so let's go. This is the actual score for reference, the entire thing. Here we go. Come on. You can do this. Here you go. Now this is Cinematic Studio Strings, we've got the melody up here, we've got the key switches down here, then we've got the dynamics, modulation, expression, the scores down here, players here, here we go. For Abbey Road Orchestra, violin, first violins, I, I tried, but it did not work out to, for me to be able to write it in just one track and just doing key switches. I had to, as you can see here, add a second card with a uh, track with the short notes to kind of like add a little bit of, of the, the attack and oomph to the note, to some of the notes to kind of like define, add a little bit of definition to the melody, especially for the faster parts. Even with the performance legato, it was not able to do this. So I've got two tracks here, as you can see. Long notes, short notes, I'll select both of them, double click, and here they are. And as you can see, some notes are a little bit overlapped here, very small. Ah. So the, the melodies here, the notes are here. The key switches are down here. You won't be able to see them because they are very low. 
but you'll see them changing here in the player. This player is the uh, the one for the long notes, which are most of the notes. So you will not see uh, the staccato notes, but it's uh, the closest representation. Here we go, down below, score again, boom. And I left here this weirdness in, uh, on purpose. See that C note? Yeah, sorry. Got confused. Let's continue. All right, and then cinematic studio strings. Same deal. Long notes, short notes, was not able to make it work. I'll explain this a little bit more in detail later on. Uh, but I was not able to make it work with just one track using key switches. So one more time. There's the melody up here. Then this is the player for the uh, long notes, I believe. Let me see. Let me just confirm. Yeah. No. Yep. Cool. So, melody, key switches, dynamics, player, score. Here we go. So my take on this. So the first one was CSS, Semantic Studio Strings. Perfect, no complaints, doable. It takes some time to program, obviously, but everything works as expected. We could have made it sound a little bit better if we put more time, but in 20, 25 minutes, you get a good result. And uh, as you are programming it, it's, it just does what it's expected. Um, was able to do it in just one, with one, one track using key switches, not having to layer. The, the short notes for extra oomph or definition eh, or attack. Um, short and long articulations, very balanced. That's very important because they are, for, uh, for example, with cinematic studio strings, which I love, uh, but sometimes the, 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 the consistency left, right, the consistency left, right um, with the staccato notes, sometimes staccato notes sound a little bit more to the left or more centered than the legato. So it had to adjust. So it's, it, it's minor, but sometimes it's there. Um, so, Again, this good, short long articulation is very balanced. The hardest part to adjust performance to, to compensate for latency, which is different in each articulation. Um, so I'll show you. So the hardest part of this exercise is to program the melody in a way that plays in tempo, right? So first, I'm going to start here. See that the Cinematic Studio Strings here, Cinematic Studio String, there you go, has 100 and uh, minus 150 milliseconds of negative delay. Ah, cool. So if I click here, this means that when I'm performing like the mid, kind of like the mid uh, speed legato, um, it'll work, right? So if I quantize them, it will play on time. Um, but or the fast, the fast speed legato rather. So when I'm doing, when I'm performing, let me just open this. When I'm performing fast. Legato lines like this. I had to hit harder to, to go fast. Then if I quantize them, it will sound on time, right? But when I'm performing medium, uh, medium speed, then I have to move them a little bit ahead. See, like this one. So it plays on time. If I switch to marcato and uh, with, without the speaker overlay, then I have to move them a little, not nudge them a little bit to the right. And if I add the uh, spiccato overlay, right, then I have to move them a little bit more. Okay, so for example, more to the right, nudge them. From here. Okay, so this kind of thing. So it takes a little bit of time to get it right. Also, this chart node, see? Mm -hmm. 
for some libraries, they have a very slow attack, and you have to start here. And this library has a slow attack, but uh, but uh, it uh, it triggers them a little bit earlier. So, um, sorry, because of the negative delay, I don't have to start here. I have to start here because the beginning of the note will sound here for the first note of the legato line. See, if I it's it's written here, but it starts earlier. So so anyway, it's uh, pretty obvious what I'm explaining, but uh, it just takes time. Just saying that, okay. So that is the hardest part when it comes to program a melody like this. But this doesn't mean that this this uh, that CSS is harder to program. That's what I thought. Uh, but uh, I thought that Abbey Road Orchestra would be a little bit easier and more user friendly or more playable. Not necessary. So this was the hardest part. But using key switches, um, it's, it's the cleanest way because when you are Layering staccatos, you are making for that specific note. If you are layering a staccato um, articulation underneath the legato, then it's gonna add a little bit of thickness to the phrase. It's just, it's it's very small um, and it's very subtle, but it's not as clean as using key switches. I you know, on the other hand, when using long notes in one track and short notes in the other one, usually it's faster to program. It's going you're gonna move faster. And for kind of like these uh you know modern or casual mock-up or cinematic type of music, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't make a big difference in an orchestral context. You don't even feel the difference sometimes. But if we want to be uh pure, this is the cleanest way of doing it. Cool. So that's exactly here. So I did it this way. It's hard. It sounds nice. But if I had to do it again, I would have done it, uh, you know, a simpler line just for the legatos and uh, layer some shorter notes for definition. All right, moving on to Abbey Road Orchestra first violins. So it is, again, doable, no problem. But it took me longer than CSS. So I thought it'd be more playable, but it took me longer. I had problems with, and uh, let's... Uh, just be real for a second. I got very excited when I got my hands on uh, Abbey Road Orchestra first violins. And uh, when, when you are playing with it without a click track, it sounds nice and beautiful. Um, and then it's very playable. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very easy to use. Um, it sounds good. But when you push it a little bit more to the limit, not, not to the limit, but when you push it a little bit, right? When you are asking this library to perform as realistically as possible, kind of like transcribing classical music, um, there are certain things that won't do. And so then, which which is super typical with sample libraries, there are certain thing that they, the things that they won't be able to do. And so then we just operate the, the way we always have done it, right? We just hacks that will emulate the sound that that we want to recreate, but it's not performed the exact same way an orchestra would do. Make sense? So instead of uh, instead of maybe playing like a legato, like, like if you've got type of thing, right? So instead of recording it with uh, it's a legato that ends with a short note, right? And you would expect that you could do it with you could switch and go from like a legato and the last note is kind of like a short note and then you overlay on a speak out, so like this, right? In the same patch, or you can, or the library won't perform like you would expect it to do it. And so you're like, okay, you know, just no problem. I'll lay um, a layer and stack out a note. Uh, so the it's it's a great library, but the the engine will not be able to, or the sampler or the way it's been designed, the, the programming, it sometimes it's not able to perform specific, a little bit more advanced, it's not even advanced figures, but more complicated figures. There you go, you get the point. So I tried, took me longer, tried to do it in one patch, couldn't, finally had to layer some short notes. Here and there, you know, all this cool kind of approach uh, for clarity and attack. So, sorry, this needs to go away. So that's all. So see here, this is the legato, uh, and these are the staccato notes. So if we open up both of them, and I select this one here, is the 
destacados, sí destacados, overlaid um, or layered on top. So let's um, open the long delegados ones, open this guy, and then let's play this one so you get the point. But uh, the ones, the short ones are destacados. And you will be able to see the staccatos here, as you can see, and then the, the changes in the legato patch here. But basically, I'm switching between the legato uh, performance, the performance legato, and the slurred legato. So let's take a listen one more time, so you see. We'll take a listen just to the, this first bit, and I'll explain, then I'll move, I'll move on to the scene strings. But here we go. So see, it's a very simple phrase. Let's look at the score uh, here. So see, So it's the it has the arco ends in the second note. So the second note and the third note need to be separated. Right? That, that's what we're trying to recreate. No, type of thing. Right? So. So tarin here we've got this staccato note here tarin and what I try to do is to initially to use the performance yeah the performance if we go here to the long this one see try to do something like this tarin oops something like this and obviously, in the same patch, I could I could have switched from legato to staccato, the second one, boom, switch to staccato, and then perform like something like this, uh, boom, and then and perform the staccato. But then it's not a, it's not, it's not an actual real legato from the first long note to the second shorter note, and so that's something that's a limitation. So I had to and the, the the result actually it's that long note and finally the staccato. Um, but if uh, we use Cinematic Studio Streams, we can go from the uh, sustained legato patch, right? And then we would transition to the F sharp, which is the spiccato, uh, sorry, the, the, the marcato with the spiccato overlay. And then we still respect the, like, we still transition with, there's a legato uh, sample being triggered between the two notes, but we go from this shorter one, uh, sorry, from the, uh, from the legato one or, or sustained one for this uh, slower, sm smoother, nicer attack. And then, boom, transition. And it's a little bit nicer. Right? So that is something that I struggle. I try to do it with, uh, you know, I guess if you tweak, 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 maybe we could have uh, gotten something similar. But it just took me more time. And at the end of the day, time is of essence. And uh, it is sound is very important. Don't, don't, don't take me wrong. But to me as a composer, I... As long as it sounds good, and in this case, you know, I think two strings sounds outstanding. To me, it's uh, at least equally as important to be able to move fast or as fast as possible, right? So that's it. Now I'm gonna move to cinematic studio strings that we uh, hear before, and these are my conclusions here. Very similar to Abbey Road Orchestra, cinematic studio strings again, doable. Again, had to go all the school and layer short notes for clarity and attack here and there, uh, more so than with uh, Abbey Road Orchestra, first violins. And uh, the problem with this light re and layering is that when you layer, uh, a staccato note underneath a legato note. It had both have to be in tune, or at least in the same tune. Uh, they have to be in tune um, because if there's a, a little bit of out of tuneness, you're gonna see it there. And with cinema, with uh, cine samples, there are some notes that are slightly out of tune, uh, which most of the times is no problem because it's very subtle. But in this case, um, it's noticeable. And uh, I'll show you some examples. And uh, the, the the thing with uh, the, the problem with this particular library is that you cannot fix the out of tune because it's not like the note is out of tune. It's like the perform the, the, the recording of the, that note in the section. There's a tuning problem. So that means that some and this that doesn't happen in every note, obviously, but there are some notes. So essentially, what happens is that when, when they recorded that note, some of the violins inside that section played a little bit out of tune so it's not a problem it's not a problem that can be fixed it's just the way it is all right um 
I guess AI one day will be able to fix uh, out of two within one sample. I, I don't know, whatever. So an example of this happens here at the end. So if we go here, hopefully all the... Uh... Ah, dang. So let's uh, just solo this. See, there's a little bit of so this note is kind of like the, the the marcato on top of. If if this note was not here, see it happens again there because there's another marcato. Those marcato notes are there just to add a little bit of oomph definition and attack at the beginning of the legato note. Uh, then ton ton needed to be here for uh, trying trying to represent the or, or to recreate the melody a little bit better. So, but a little bit out of, out of tune. The last one you can tell very clearly. And so now, uh, there's a little bit of fluctuation at the beginning of that marcato note, which uh, conflicts with the legato. All Mark just get rid of the legato and just have the portamento of yeah, for, that. That would have been the solution, hundred percent. Then we would lose a, the, the the legato transition, which I wanted to preserve for this particular transcription because we're transcribing a classical music and we wanted to, to get as close as possible. But if I, you know, if I, I I'm I love Cine, Cine strings. I use it many times, especially or you know, yeah, I, the the short notes. I like them because they have a little bit of extra aggression. More, 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 more. It's that they are a little brighter, and I like them for, um, for um, I think a little bit of brightness to accents. I like them a lot, um, but in this case, uh, it this presents a problem. Cool. Second example. This is Haydn's Symphony One Hundred Four, and it does like this. All right, cool. Uh, now I was out, out of tune. <laughs> ah, um, cinematic studio strings. Let's take a listen to this. Uh, just uh, open the melody. In this second example, as I said at the beginning, I wanted to use uh, to separate different articulations in different tracks instead of using key switches. But in this case, with Cinematic Studio Strings, I continue to use key switches. It's a library that's very easy to use, very consistent. And so I just went with it um, and I spent 20 minutes and this was the result. Nope, that was not the result. And in fact, let me bring the score. Now here's the score um, in the melody. The key switches are down here, but basically you can see the key switches happening here. You'll see that I'm, the, the trick with this library for me is to be switching between the sustain note using the different legato speeds by see the, there are some notes that are, I brought it up, velocity to increase the legato speed, so simple as that. And then switching from sustain to marcato patch and sometimes without the spiccato overlay and sometimes with the spiccato overlay. Without the spiccato overlay, it'll be a, a, a faster, harsher attack than the sustain legato. And with the spiccato overlay, you can do the short notes. So here we go. The second one is going to be Abbey Road Orchestra, first violins, and then again, combination, the, the legatos here, and then spiccatos here. I'm going to select both of them, and I'm going to open this one here. What you see here in the player is the, the legato notes.
All right, so could have been improved a little bit, but again, 20 minutes each to be fair. And uh, again, I had a little bit of a harder time uh, with this one, but same conclusion, conclusions as I told you earlier. And uh, there's one thing that I wanted to mention, I forgot, oh yeah, the, uh, the mic positions here, uh, close with, a, li with a, a little bit of the tree two. For scene strings, I'm using just the, the regular mix and for cinematic scene strings, which we're gonna hear in a second, uh, kind of like similar uh, the room with a little bit of the spot mics which we're going to hear right now because it's down here and the same thing combination of long notes and staccatos or short notes but in this case you know for the things like this I just you know, like here's a legato right like and uh, so these two notes should be legato but I just with this this down down here let me just make this a little bigger these two notes should be a legato right so I should use a fast legato so right so here i should have used uh, like a fast speed legato something like this and then staccato tontan or spiccato tontan so legato trantatin but this this should be a little bit shorter because we want to hear a little bit of separation between this note and the next one type of thing this is how I should have programmed it, but I went with torira don tan torira. So staccato, 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 torira, spiccato, spiccato, totita. So what you're gonna hear is more like torir, totita tonta instead of torira don tan. You're gonna hear more like totita tonta. Here portamento note. So long, long, uh, long or kind of forchato, not portamento. Sorry, the marcato. No, this guy here, marcato for this one. So this is marcato tan tan. This one is going to be staccato tan tan tin, and here marcato again. So um, I, in this case, I just wanted to you know just kind of like go like the standard way. So that when you are fa when you are, when you are when time off is of essence and you need to move fast and it's like let me just get this done at this point that I cannot. You know, I, I just don't have time for perfecting the legato in terms of like speed, the exact moment, like nudging notes left and right to make sure that they align because depending on the legato speed, then, you know, don't align with the clip, blah, 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 the whole thing. And so I went with the staccatos. That's how 90% of the times you're composing, right? So in this case, I did this. And you'll see that it's not that big of a difference. But uh, comes, but I, I, I had to do it because this particular library, which again, I love scene strings and I use it a lot, but there are, there's the, the out of the three libraries is the one with the most inconsistencies in my, that's, that's my experience. And again, I love the company. I use the other uh, scene brass a lot. Um, there are many libraries that, that I love, but in this case, it just made it a little bit harder to work with unless you go this route. In this case, there's no layering. When I when there was a moment that I could have a, a, a nice legato line, I had the legato. When I had problems, I went with different type of short notes. There we go. So I'm going to, there you go. That's what I wanted to do. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here. I know it's very small. I'm going to select these two guys here. Now I'm going to give preference to the short notes so you can see them on top. And you'll see that most of the time, most of the time, see in this case, I the, the, the explanation that I did, it, there's, there's, there's an actual legato on top, not just the, not just the uh, marcato, staccato, marcato kind of thing. Uh, but um, here's the key switches. You're going to see, let's do two passes. One with the legato. And you're gonna see the yeah you're gonna see the player for the legato notes in fact let, let me just rearrange this uh, give me a sec all right so now so the faded notes or the legato notes uh sometimes there's a little bit of layering and sometimes just the the staccatos uh the player here are the legatos the player here are the staccatos and uh down here you can see the key switches these are uh, the ones th these ones are kind of like the the shorter notes which is the, the staccato, this one here. And then when uh, I go here, this is the marcato. The staccato sounds like this. And the marcato, like this, all right? And I also activated the the short release, which is, uh, it's, um, it's just works for the marcato. So if you, if you cut it short, 
then it triggers a, a the release sample. If I didn't have this active, then I should have uh, here. There you go. So if you don't have this active, it performs the entire note. If I toggle this on, or the entire length, right? So. This gives me a little bit more of control over the length of the marcato note. That's everything that I configured. The one thing that I didn't mention earlier, say I moved the cinematic, uh, the scene strings a little bit to the left uh, because it sounded a little bit more centered than the other two libraries. Cool, let's go. Let's start from here. Oops, sorry. One more if you want. You're gonna skip this part, but I messed up with the view a little bit, so I'm gonna play back again. Alright, just sure. All right, cool. So these libraries are great. They're great. But if you compare them and you try for like if you if you try to do the same exercise with the three of them for this particular type of music, uh, to me, there's a clear winner to me. Uh, Cinematic Studio Strings it just works better. It's more consistent, sounds better. Everything's in tune um, and uh, it's easier to use. It, it does what you expect it to do. It, uh, this is uh, easier said than done. There's there's a lot of uh, programming to be able to uh, to create a library that, that that can do so much. And the, the beauty about cinematic uh, cinematic studio strings is that uh, it's it's such an easy to use interface, and it feels like you know very easy and very simple, but it's, it's got so much power, so much, right? And sometimes we take things for granted, but everything that you've got in the in, in the in the patch, then you switch to. Consortino, and we get the same thing now, Consortino, which is crazy, right? Um, anyway, uh, the other two libraries are fantastic, but they don't perform as well as uh, uh, Cinematic Studio Strings, in this case, for this type of music. By the way, I find myself writing this type of music 1% of the times, right? Uh, many times for cinematic music, we want, like, obviously, with sometimes for, like, adventure styles and things like this, we're going to find ourselves writing this type of melodies. But many times uh, we're going to be doing staccatos, right, or stinatos. Sometimes we're going to have, uh, you know, like a sustained path um, for like background. Sometimes we're going to ha just have like slow melodies. So uh, the, 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 the three of them would perform really, really well in these uh, three scenarios. But for something like this, CSS is the, the winner, uh, in my opinion. So we had in the last video, slow legatos, three to one. And now for like faster Allegro Legatos, three to one as well. And so a total of six, four, two. Uh, we still have to do short notes with the transcription or the, of uh, in this case, uh, we listen to the score and then we did a reduction and then we're going to transcribe that to that, uh, that uh, reduction. So John Powell's The Born Ultimatum, that's going to be Waterloo. And then finally, Chris Young, Spider-Man. But before we go there, that's going to be the next video. In my last video, if we go here, I wanted to address a couple of things. First, I was using Cine Strings 1.0, and uh, in fact, the Little Prince 8446 mentioned this in the comments. So thanks for this. And so I did an, a fourth, another take of uh, variations of an original theme. In this case, with uh, Cinema Cine Strings 2.0. The reason why I use Cine Strings 1.0 is because they did a great they did a great job here cleaning up lots of the sample most of the samples here in 2.0. Uh, the scripting has changed as well, but the uh, to me the let me make this a little bigger. I, I really like the shorts for the 
for version 1.0 and I definitely clean them like this like this is one and this is two okay so one but I like a little bit of that uh, uh, rawness or is a little bit more dirty or uh, has a little bit more of a it, it's just a, it's a little bit more aggressive and I like it than this one you know the essence is there but it's, it has lost some of the grittiness in my opinion like um, uh, it's kind of like the same uh but clearly there's there's a little bit more room here anyway i just like it a little bit better so that's why i use 1.0 uh, but definitely for the long notes so the difference between 1.0 And two. A little bit softer, less harsher. So now the comparison. This is what I did last week, just for reference. Cinematic Studio Strings. We'll start here. Okay, then we went with uh, Abbey Road Orchestra. And then I did Cinema, Cine Strings version one. It was a little bit harsher and now two. again one sec there you go You'll notice that this, in this example, I have the reverb deactivated, and that in the earlier examples, I did have the reverb activated here in uh, the Cine Samples uh, 2.0 um, or Cine Strings. The last thing that I wanted to mention is in uh, slow melodies like this, very clear, it becomes very clear that uh, Cine Strings is, is harsher and brighter than the other two. And, uh, I process the strings with a little bit of black, mat, uh, black box. It adds a little bit of brightness uh, to the strings, but I do not. So if you see the cinema, cine, stu, cine studio strings, cinematic studio strings, um, go through the strings long high bass, which has that box that uh, plugin inserted. But for uh, for cine strings, I don't have this plugin inserted as you can see. Because I don't want to brighten. They are a little bit brighter because they, they, they got recorded. The Sony scoring stage is a little bit brighter. That's one thing. And also, they, the Deveca the, the tree, they had the vintage M50s, and the M50s are a little bit brighter, which is nice for, for many, many uh, cases. And is that the, the typical mics to record with an orchestra are, they are these are mics that preserve the high frequencies even when they are far away from the source, which is the high frequency, the first thing that kind of goes away um, the farther the mic is from the source. So, but in this case, a little a little bit brighter than the other libraries, which I love, especially as I was saying in the beginning, for the short staccatos, for the aggression, and I keep that, I, I like that for accenting, uh, for adding brightness to the to accents. All right, so that is it. Wrong one, here, ah. That's it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. To me, 
uh, CSS is the one that I like the most. Um, I got very excited at the beginning when I got my hands into uh, Abbey Road Orchestra first violins and I was playing with it. It's a lot of fun, uh, but I have to say after a couple of weeks working with it, uh, to me, it does not have the four hundred or four fifty dollars of added value to what I already have. So I don't think to me it's worth the price because I already have a library. It's a great, beautiful library, but it's expensive to take into account that you have to also add the rest of the instruments. And I don't see it even beating other libraries at uh, like Cinematic Studio Strings, I think it's $3.99. So that's it. I hope you got some value. Please post in the comments what are your thoughts. I'd love to read and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.